Yes! Spawning in the top right-hand side in the red, it is our Swedish slash Canadian Zerg player. And his name is Namshar. Namshar, of course, currently teamless. So somebody pick this guy up because he is going to go far here in Group B. And spawning in the bottom left-hand side in the green, representing Canada, also teamless. It is our Protoss player. Semper. So, we've just wrapped up Group A. It looks like almost all of those matches are finished up. Let me update Liquipedia here to check and see if there are any more updates. No, no additional updates. So, Group A has been wrapped. TLO going 2-0. Uh, Masa, Scarlet, Silky, and Neeb still playing. Uh, but Creature, Firefox going 0-2. And Disc ending up in the middle at a 1-1. But that's group A, and we are now moving into group... I was about to say group number B. Uh, group number B. And group B is also a ferocious group. So group A has a couple standout big-name players. TLO, Masa, Silky, Neeb, Scarlet. Probably the most scary. But Disc, Creature, and Firefox, not walkovers either. Group B is similar in composition. Astrea, Future, Namshar, Nina, Vindicta, and then uh, Semper, Jon Snow, and Jay Heffy. Probably the three lighter weight players in Group B, but of course any of them could surprise us. StarCraft is certainly an any given Sunday type of game. Uh, I'm excited to see what these players bring. I think Namshar is probably the favorite here, but he hasn't been putting up as big results as he had in the past lately, so there's always room for improvement in his play. We're going to have to see what he can get done here in game number one. We see the probe scout from Semper coming in here. Semper is not yet scouted. A bit of a brave play from Semper, sending that late probe scout. Because, of course, if he was getting 12 pooled, he would need that information much, much sooner. Uh, one drone is going to get chased away, but with the lings out, the lings going to try and get on top of that. Oh, look at that control from Namshar. Targeting those uh, those lings past the probes so that they can get on top of it and push it back, interrupting its escape path. Because without speed, it's going to be a long, long time before those lings catch up with the probe. Meanwhile, two other links steaming across the south side of the map right now. Gonna try and sneak their way into the natural base of Semper. Semper is opening up with a Stargate opener. And uh, I'm, I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed to see what the Stargate can do against Namshire here. Adept gonna drive these links away. But of course, there is a queen here. The queen should be able to spread creep. Well, I'm going to wait a bit to spread creep as the Adept is here. Does not want to lose that creep tumor to the Adept. The Lings, of course, for Namshar getting in. We'll see this Stargate finishing up. Namshar's vision, perfect this game. He knows exactly the timing of those two gases. He knows the timing of that Starport, or Stargate, rather. And he knows what to expect. So, things are looking really good here for Namshar. A good scout. Semper, meanwhile, going to try and maybe sneak in. No, he's going to cancel that shade. Does see the timing on the third base, but doesn't see a Roach Warren. Doesn't see any additional gases taken. Knows it's not two base spire. Nothing spectacular coming out from Namshar. Nothing surprising. Overlord coverage from Namshar leaves a bit to be desired here. Just keeping a few out on the map right now. I'd love to see some more scouting links, but of course this Overlord from Namshar is going to spot the first Oracle that has come out from Semper. And whoa, look at this behind this. Semper not going for one Oracle, instead going for... Two. Two oracles, a bit of a, a more rare play among Protoss players these days. Usually we see one oracle or one phoenix. Two oracles, a bit less popular, but still happens from time to time. This first oracle gets pushed out by the queen, doesn't want to lose that first oracle. Definitely smart for Semper to wait for the second oracle, oracle to pop out. Going to join those two oracles in a holy, whatever the Protoss version of matrimony is. I imagine it's a lot like that scene from Avatar where they tie their braids together and have weird Avatar sex. Uh, that's truly, that's what Protoss do as well. And those two oracles, I was going to say, are going to join and go across the map to get some damage done. Uh, but I am just wrong. They're going to sit back home and defend. And now they're going to go out just to make me seem like a dumb caster. Uh, interesting that he waited for a little while to get those oracles out. Maybe a bit of a mistake from Semper. Uh, but Namshire more than prepared. He's got spores in the main, spore in the natural. Should have a spore in that third base as well. Very well protected. Adding on a ton of workers right now. We see 51 workers out. Five more drones about to hit the field. A total of 56 workers. Putting him uh, 12 workers, 14 workers ahead of his opponent. Oracle's popping in the main base. But the Hydralisk dead is finished up. Uh, pardon me, no, the Lair about to finish up. No Hydralisk dead. I'm thinking of a different game. Apologies, guys. Roach Warren finished up. Lair tech working his way down now. And the Oracle's not going to be able to get that kill on the Queen as the second Queen rotates around. So Namshar still in good, good nick as the Glaive follow-up 
happens from Semper. This is really interesting. I see this a lot in Protoss players. It's one of the most common ways to pull out of a Stargate opener that doesn't do a whole lot of damage if you don't want to keep investing in Stargate units. This is one of the smartest things that a Protoss player can do, is to just go ahead and transition into the Glaived follow-up. We should see uh, Robo down soon for the Warp Prism, or ooh, maybe he's going to skip the Robo entirely and just go across, adding up the number of Glaived Adepts here. Glaived about three quarters of the way done right now, just a few seconds away from completing, and there's actually a lot on the ground for Simper right now. Luckily, Namsher's Roach Warren was finished up in good time. His Roach, Warren at, his Roach count at seven now, and he's adding on seven more. Gonna have 14 roaches to deal with these few number of oracles. A uh, few number of adepts, rather. Oracle's gonna try and pop into the main base to get some damage done, try and distract it, but the queens are here. And they should push that away. Five drone kills immediately. The adepts focus firing down some drones, but the lynx and roaches getting on top of them here, and a lot of adepts are gonna get sacrificed to the gods of roach defense here. Only two of those adepts getting away to the third base, and there are already roaches here to deal with it. So as the oracles are pushed away, it looks like one oracle went down in the fight. Oh, there it is, sorry. Looks like one Oracle went down in the fight, as did 10 Adepts. Nine drone kills total, but that is not nearly enough for the huge sacrifice those Protoss, player, those Protoss units of Semper made. Baneling Nest down for Namshar. Adding on Roach speed, getting plus one missile attack. We're going to see Ling Bane Roach out of Namshar. Not the best build in the world, but very sturdy throughout the mid game. So I'm quite excited to see if Namshar can get any damage done with these Roaches. What he should be doing now, yeah, taking a fourth base. Driving up his roach count. Well, what I usually talk about in my stream is the knee of the curve. We saw earlier Namshire, of course, making a bunch of roaches to defend here in the army supply. But what we're about to see is Namshire getting into the knee of the curve. Once Ventral, uh, once Ventral Sacks, it's uh, Pneumatized Carapace, finishes up for Namshire. Once plus one finishes up, he's going to add on a couple more rounds of drones to saturate up the fourth base. And then it's going to be roaches, 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 banelings, banelings, banelings for the rest of the game for Namshire. He's hoping this game doesn't go past 10 minutes right now. There's no additional tech past that uh, lair. There's no infestation pit, no spire. It looks like he wants to stay on Roach, Ling, Bane, and really put the screws to Semper. Behind this, Semper not doing a terrible job. He's working on 71 workers right now, has his third base down, a couple more gateways popping out, but the double robo is really what's fascinating right now from Semper. He's adding on a warp prism to these three immortals and should be able to crank out immortals two at a time. And of course, if you know anything about roaches, you know that they are the mortal enemy of immortals. Immortals are the natural predator of roaches. And if those roaches don't get any bailing support, if the bailing hits don't go off the way they should, Namshire's going to be in some trouble. Namshire preparing for this eventuality. Already grabbing an infestation pit. Going to tech up to Hive. A little stasis ward going down on some of those drones that we missed earlier. But a bit of lost mining time. Not the end of the world for Namshire. But, but uh, Semper doing a pretty good job staying on top of him here. With uh, 71 workers to the 83 of Namshire. Namshire adding on a fifth base. Semper still at three. Plus one finishing up soon for Semper. But of course plus two missile attack. Plus one melee attack already coming out for Namshire. Now, I wonder if Namshire's going to go to plus three missile attack or if he's going to start getting those carapace upgrades before too long. Nice goop, by the way, on that forge, stopping plus one from doing any more damage. Scouting, hallucinating the Phoenix, picked off by the Queens and the Spore Crawlers. And Namshire's going to move out here. Roach, Ravager, Ling, Bane. As we said at the beginning of the game, a very dangerous combination. Right now, he's got 15 Banes on the map with an additional 24 Banes. 30 Banes coming down. That's 45 Banelings for Namshire. Now, there's a very small run by coming through from Semper here. Uh, he's got a couple Archons with it and all of his Immortals. Where is that Warp Prism, though? He needs to get the Warp Prism with this army. If he can't juggle those Immortals, he is in a lot of trouble. The Warp Prism trying to get some units in the main base here. One more Stasis Ward is going down. That, uh... Oracle still being tracked by the Overlord. But here we go. Pressure on the fifth base. And I think Semper's probably going to uh, get this one. I think Namshire might have to let it go. Corrosive Bile's picking down some of the Force Fields here. The Banelings crashing through, though. Banelings going out to the Archons and getting some of these Immortals here. The Immortal Shields are getting popped. Banelings trying to find some good damage on the Immortals in the background. Good Corrosive Biles. And the War Prism goes down. That's going to force a recall from Semper. But Namshire taking a huge victory there. Massive Baneling shots. Great Corrosive Biles. And with the War Prism gone, that means that Semper can't push any further. Namshire successfully defends his fifth base. And now look at the supply todd there is nothing left at all for semper that is a hell of an efficient trade for our zerg player that is an ugly army supply graph if you are a protoss player a follower of the kala or in any way at all interested in what happened to artanis at the end of the, the legacy of the void campaign what happened to that guy what's he up to is he gonna retire he needs like a farm 
big storms on those banelings really nice that's gonna save semper for just a little while but look at this lings behind him two of the archons do get together two of the templar do get together for an archon but it's not gonna be enough gg goes down and namshar after a delicious hold on his fifth base takes game number one Big win for Namshire there, coming hot out of the gates. Remember, guys, we're just starting Group B right now. That means that that is the first map to conclude in Group B. I mean that right now, for the time being, Namshire is in the number one spot in Group B. <laughs> we're getting into second game of the day. It is going to be Namshire and Semper again. The second map, Pillars of Gold, L.E. Pillars of Gold, L.E. Here for map number two. Semper has not joined the lobby. Uh, I was going to ask the players if they would share a fun fact or something, but I don't want to uh, put them off their game. That'd be a little unprofessional of me to talk too much to the players. We were joking a bit before game number one started. They were making fun of how old I was. And uh, actually, that's not true. They were being very polite about how old I was. Um... Or old I am. Making fun of how old I am. I still am old. I was old before, but I'm still old now. Anyway, they're making fun of how old I am, uh, but I don't want to, you know, throw them off their game, especially now that they're into the series. It, it'd be a little rude to talk to the players and, you know, see how they're doing and say hi and everything. Uh, anyway, game number two coming down soon for Namshire and Semper. Pillars of Gold LE, our second map. Now, Pillars of Gold is a great map. Of course, we were on Ice and Chrome before, one of the new additions to the map pool this season. Pillars of Gold, another new addition to the map pool. And I gotta say, I love Pillars of Gold so far. The architecture around the third base, fourth base, is a, is fascinating. Especially with Zerg players, you can sort of siege up, get on top of it. I'm really excited to see what game number two looks like and to see if Semper can pull out a win here and maybe bring us to a game three. So far on this stream, I believe I've had 2-0 and 2-0 for my games today. And it would be really cool to see one of my games going to a game three. Quick update from Group A. Silky has defeated Neeb. Two to zero. Whoa! Whoa! In his first game, Neeb beat Scarlet two to one. Second series, Silky beat Neeb. 2-0 by the transitive power of StarCraft victories. Neve is better than Scarlet. Or, pardon me, uh, Silky is better than Scarlet. You heard it here first, kids. Anyway, back to Group B. Let's hop in to game number two between these two players. Spawning. In the top right-hand side in the red. It is our Swedish Zerg player. Representing Canada here in the North American Cup as he resides in Canada now, I believe, with his partner. It is our red Zerg player, and his name is Namshar. Namshar, formerly of Infinity Gaming. Uh, Infinity, unfortunately, closing their doors a few weeks ago. And his opponent on the bottom left-hand side in the green. Also currently teamless. Uh, let me see here. Formerly a member of... Let me look him up on Liquipedia. Yeah, formerly on uh, Root Gaming for a long time. And then Rise Esports for all of 2018. But teamless now for about a year. It is our green Protoss player. His name is Semper. Updates from Group B rolling in on the Liquipedia page, of course. We see that uh, Nina... Has taken one game against Jay Heffy. No surprises there. Nina, a great Protoss player. Gateway, Nexus, Cyber Opener yet again for Semper. And Namshar going for that hatch gas pool. Conservative standard openings again from both players. Economic openings from both players. And we'll get another chance to see... What's happening in the mid-game with both these guys? I, You know, I do love a, a cheese every now and then. I love a rush. I love a proxy. You know me. I love any game that is high on the fun factor. But we're in a serious tournament now. Dreamhack, it doesn't get much more serious than this. It is so important 
that these players play their all and going for a very risky strategy might not be the way that you want to start here at the beginning of DreamHack Summer. Especially if it's your very first match of the day, of the group, of the tournament. You don't want to lose out because you made some silly strategy earlier on. And your opponent just saw it. It, it. It's brutal to lose a StarCraft game. If you do a strategy and you're like, well, this has a 75% chance of winning as long as X doesn't happen. Uh, bad news. In a tournament like this, X is always going to happen. Uh, and much like... Fry from Futurama. A player is going to think, you know, don't don't you worry about X. You let me worry about X. Uh, and both players, I think, worried about X right now. Stargate opener for Semper as the third base is dropped for Namshire. Now, Namshire again with a pretty early third base here. Very good timing from him. As we said, economic play from both players. And I'm excited to see if Namshire can make anything happen here with this early third base. Maybe go for some roach pressure. But we'll just have to see. Does have a scouting overlords in place outside the natural. Moving one into the... Or going to hold this one, I guess. Over the main as well. Stalker here to drive it away in case he wants to scout out. Good stalker timing from Semper. Putting that one on patrol just in time. Third base from Namshire going to finish up soon. And for now, Namshire is just content to crank out drone, drone, drone. He's on 35 workers. Adding on five more. Going to be up to uh, 42 workers here very soon. A couple extra queens on the way, and yeah, there it is. Finally, we see Namshire grabbing that all-important Roach Warren. Oracle already on the way out from Semper. Second Oracle on the way out from Semper. And he should be able to push these two Oracles together and move them across the map yet again. Hello to everyone in chat, by the way. I'm sorry, guys. I'm on a... Essentially, I think I'm on a four-minute delay. I set my personal stream up to a two-minute delay, and I believe that DreamHack has already set their channel on a two-minute delay anyway, so I'm pretty sure I'm accidentally four minutes behind you guys. Uh, I am still reading chat. If you do want to say hello, please do uh, hop into the chat, say hello, talk about the games. I'll respond when I can, but it is going to be a, a bit of a break in between these series. Oracle's going to try and get in here. Of course, Oracles can roast drones very quickly. They can one-shot a drone basically with their Oracle Beams. But Spore and a Queen will push them away. Meanwhile, Namshire doing some Ling Pressure here on the third. He's got to feel very good about this Ling Pressure. Knows that if you open up Stargate, you're not going to have as many units on the ground right now. Gets a full surround on these Adepts. The Adepts not going to shade away here. And even though there's a Warp In coming in from Semper, I think Namshire can probably get on top of this third base and actually do a bit of damage here. Second Adept Warp In. Two more Adepts coming through. And with the extra Adepts, I think the Lings might be pushed away. Yeah, Oracle's coming to join the fight. This third base will be secured but Namshire getting a lot of kills there. Four Adepts going down for the low, low cost of a few Zerglings. Second gas finally being, or pardon me, uh, fourth, third and fourth gas is finally being taken here for Namshire as he goes up to Lair Tech. First Immortals on the way out, though, as Simper has followed up this Stargate with all the usuals. Twilight Council, Forge, Robo. First Immortal on its way out now. Oracles in the third, still trying to do some damage here. Semper eating a lot of damage on those Oracles, but not losing it. And that's critical. You know, I asked um, Mana a couple weeks ago. I had him on a, a talk show I was doing. And I asked Mana, I said, you know, how, what's the right number of, of drone kills with an Oracle or two Oracles? What do you have to have to feel good about your Oracle kill count? And he said, you know, it doesn't matter. It depends on how well the Zerg defends. Most importantly... Just don't lose your oracles. That is what's most important. So he's obviously being very cautious, being very careful, being very judicious with those oracles and doesn't want to overplay his hand. Creep spread from Namshire, continuing on here. After losing one tumor, it's tough to uh, to find the courage within yourself to make one more uh, creep tumor happen to try and get those queens down to really push him out aggressively because you're always worried about the threat of oracles. But Namshire doing a good job staying out of the map and he drops that fourth base now. Long distance mining from the fourth base. But I will see these oracles from Semper. Ten kills. Wow, ten kills and zero kills. Bit of a, a Starsky and Hutch situation there with one of them being very flashy. Anyhow, uh, should be pushed away again, but great control from Semper here. Saving both these oracles. Even tips around for the revelation on the backside. We'll see everything coming out of Namshire's base. Of course, there's nothing spectacular right now. Coming out from Namshire tech-wise, he's working on plus one missile attacks. He's working on Baneling speed. Gonna go for Ling, Bane, Roach, Ravager again here in game number two. 
Meanwhile, he gets the scout off on Semper, and what do his overseer eyes see? Not much. One of everything. A couple extra gates getting thrown down here. Semper gearing up for a bit of a timing push with Archons and plus one. And actually, this timing push, timing push could be really, really effective. Semper moving across the map now. He's got two Immortals. He's got plenty of Archons, two Archons, even more on the way. And he's going to march his way into the fourth base. Now, the Overlord sees this coming. Roaches and Ravagers being, or Ravagers being morphed in right now. 14 Banes getting added on to the number that's already on the field. And Semper should be in a decent position to defend against this. Uh, Scouting Phoenix are going to see the entire composition of Namshire's army. Let's see if Semper still goes for this. He's got plenty back home. He doesn't really need to commit to this attack. I'd be very surprised if he did. Wow, he, he's going to commit to it, I think. This is a bit of a mistake. He's on 70 workers. He's on three bases. Go back home. Drop a fourth base. Dude, there's no way you can win this, Semper. I know you want to cause some trouble. You want to cause some damage, but I don't think it's going to happen. Revelation again going down on Namshar's army here, but it's still five bases to three, and things are getting worse and worse for Semper as the game goes on. The worker count, not that different. Again, if we look at the income tab, we can see it's been in Namshar's favor, but not terribly in Namshar's favor. Just, you know, a max of 750 minerals per minute. Now hovering around 200. The army supply, still fairly even. Again, remember, roaches and ravagers are very supply heavy. Uh, take up a lot of space. In your army supply and what we need to see is a transition from namshire and he realizes that too he's like all right infestation pit down gonna get up to hive tech gonna start working on either brood lords or ultralisks either would be an acceptable choice i'm curious to see what he goes for here in game number two of course with the one game lead it does behoove namshire to play it safe play it cool play it cautious it's much easier to win a game two than to start from scratch on a game number three Namshire bumping up against max supply, though, is going to start trading out some of these Lings, Roaches, Ravagers, and Banelings for something more valuable. I'm not sure what that's going to be. His Infestation Pit is finished. There's no Hive tech on the way yet. He should start that Hive very quickly. Pylon should see these rocks getting worked down, sees the Lings on the south side, sees the Corrosive Biles coming in, sees Banelings morphing in as well, knows that there's a lot of danger being had here, and luckily Namshire is going to poke away. But stasis wards for these Banelings on the south side. Good catches there by Stemper. Namshire are going to try and get some Zealots on top of the Banelings. No, he's not. He's just going to let these Banelings finish. This could be a bit of a mistake. There's, there's enough Banelings here. Even with an Archon and two, two Photon Cannons, they could still get into this uh, fourth base. Ah, uh, they're just going to go down on the Archons here. A bit of miscontrol from Namshire. He's going to throw away all these Banelings. None of them going to make it in. Only two probes going down, and that is not worth it. Zealot run by gets caught here. Coming up the east side of the map, and it will go down right away. Finally. Spire and Hive now on the way for Namshire. As far as tech for Semper, Fleet Beacon. Second Stargate. Carriers. Plus three now on the way for Semper. Plus two missile attacks just finishing up for Namshire. He's a little behind in the upgrade game. Worker count roughly even here. Let's see if there's an engagement. No, Namshire doesn't want to take a straight up engagement. It would be suicide to take a straight up engagement against these four immortals. Stasis Ward goes off with only two links here, and let's see if he can get any damage done. Oh, big storms onto the Banelings there. The Banelings are finding some decent connections, though. These immortals all have their barrier popped right now. Uh, nice force fields there. Corrosive Pile's going to drop the force fields down, but there is so much army for Namshire right now. I just don't know if Semper has it in him. <clears throat> He's got plenty of Immortals out, and that's the right army composition, but the army number is not quite enough. Even baits out that shield battery overcharge from Semper. Namshire is in such a good spot, adding on 11 more Banelings. Archon's trying to join the fight here, but the army supply way in favor of Namshire. Now, look at that first fight in army supply. Uh, horribly inefficient there for Semper, and Namshire able to bounce back much more quickly. And here we go. Namshire pushing in. Big warp in of Zealots into the fourth base. Greater Spire going down for our Zerg player. I'm not sure if this game is going to make it all the way to Broodlord Tech, though. The uh, Immortals in the back are doing a great job. Focus firing down the Roaches and Ravagers. The army supply is just too weighty for Semper. He's invested into the Fleet Beacon. He's invested into the second Stargate. And what is it going to get him? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again, y'all. He's going to defend here. Namshire will be pushed away. Namshire a little overcommitted, but Namshire on five bases to Semper's four. Uh, Semper's army supply very low right now, and his tech abysmal. Uh, he's working on plus three, which is great, but there are no real other upgrades aside from charge and storm. Doesn't even have blink. Uh, Zealot gets cleaned up here. And Namshire in a really good spot. Namshire in a really good spot. Greater Spire finishing up. First Corruptors on their way out. The Broodlord transition beginning in earnest for our Swedish Zerg player.
Still no fifth base from Semper as the first two carriers begin to hit the field. Now, the longer the game goes, the better the game goes for Semper. Broodlord versus Carrier is usually an easy win for the Carriers, and of course Namshire has no idea the Carriers are the order of the day. But, right now, when you're just starting to build Carriers, you're in a very dangerous position in the game because only two Carriers is not scary. Five Corruptors can melt two Carriers. Instantaneously. No question. No question. Uh, but it, once you get up to 5 carriers, 6 carriers, 8 carriers, 10 carriers, then carriers really start to get concerning and a bit alarming. So yeah, first two carriers out now for Semper. And uh, Namshire needs to scout this. He needs to scout it sooner rather than later. He knows about the fleet beacon now and should see the, the carrier. Yeah, he sees those carriers coming out of the Stargates. We see 5 Broodlords morphing in anyway from Namshire, but he needs to get some more Corruptors in the field right away. Or, um... I guess anything that shoots upward right now. He's still mostly on Roach, Ravager, Ling, and Bane, and that's not going to do anything against Carrier Immortal. The army composition for Semper looking better and better. Semper on 91 workers. The income now in favor of our Protoss player. Uh, but Namshire can't let that stand. He cannot let this aggression stand, man. He's going to drop a 6th base now, put some pressure on the 5th base. Bane run by trying to get done here, but there's so many Photon Cannons in this bottom 6 o'clock base. Nothing's going to happen. Ling's getting around these Zealots. These are Cracklings, of course. Adrenal Glands finishing a few moments ago, and plus 3, plus 3, now working its way out for Namshire. Namshire needs to strike while the iron is hot, and the iron is currently singing. Broodlords are out, going to slow push up the north side of the map, going to keep them secret, keep them safe for a little while. Can't engage with those Broodlords too early. War Prism is here, Archon is here, the army slowly rotating around from Semper, but this is going to be Semper's Achilles heel. Going carriers is a lot of fun. But. They're very slow moving. Road Ravager Ling Bane is very mobile, and I know there's some Broodlord mixed into Namshire's army here. He's storming his own units even. Uh, but he's lost. He's picking off 21, 22 at uh, probes now. The probe count getting lower and lower and lower. And this overlord's still parked over the top. We see carrier production has ceased for now as Semper is out of minerals. He's so far behind on workers now. He's in a lot of trouble. Uh, zealots are going to come around here and try and take out the queen, but the lings are here to respond to it. They won't get great surface area on the zealots. The queen will go down, but the... Uh, Zealots won't find any drone kills. We see nine more Corruptors on the map now for Namshire as the Broodlord's sharking around trying to find some damage. Still just five Broodlords, no additional ones so far. He needs to build up that carrier or Corruptor count to deal with the Carriers. Carrier production has started up yet again from Semper here. Making one, should be making two at a time, maybe three at a time here as soon as he can possibly afford it. But he's so far behind on workers now, it's going to be quite difficult for him to deal with this. Couple corrosive vials should pick off that war prism. The war prism getting it away, but the corruptors will make short work of it. And uh, even with war prism speed, that war prism can't escape these carriers. And Blamo is going to get picked off. Nicely done there by Namshire. A good defense. Worker count, even with the army count, still ahead for Namshire. I like Namshire's army composition as well. The, the broodlords in the back, the corruptors in the front. Oh, and chat, get your minus 400s, minus 400s ready. Mama ship! On the way for Semper. Stasis Ward gets attacked and then set off because, you know, just certain things. Carrier fleet up to four, moving up to five soon. Mothership will be coming. Another, another Broodlord getting added on. And these Broodlords flapping their way across the map menacingly. Four carriers, two Archons, four Immortals. The Warp Prism not part of this fight anymore. He needs to get another Warp Prism out to make sure he can juggle those Immortals if he thinks he can keep it safe. But here we go. Vipers yoinking some of the carriers here. Carrier 1 going to go down. Carrier 2 going to go down as well. Yeah, nice focus fire on those Corruptors. Broodlord shelling back the ground army. And Namshire is making it so Semper can't engage into this army at all. Zealots running by into the 3 o'clock base, but they are going to get taken down. Archons coming to lend their support as well, but it's really a half-assed attack from Semper. Uh, maybe throwing away that army supply to make space for more carriers. In fact, that's exactly what he's doing. Both players maxed out. Now the bank's getting huge. We're going to see another, another little scuffle here with the Broodlords and the Corruptors. I love the spine of the Spore Crawler Forest from Namshire up front. He's also got a bunch of spores on this south side of the map as well. Just zoning his opponent in, boxing Semper in. Semper unable to get more pressure. Unable to push out onto the map. 
I like that he's taking a ninja, ninja base here in the bottom corner. That's really cute from Semper. But Namshar, I think, should spot it soon. His creep spread pretty good. And he's got a very mobile army, these Roaches and Ravagers, bouncing around the map with relative frequency. Viper's almost maxed on energy. There's four of them here. More spores coming down for Namshar. He realizes he's got a bunch of minerals to spend. He may as well spend them. 75 workers to 85. The carrier count continues to grow, though, for Semper. Semper's lost two carriers, but he's still on six. Going to be seven carriers before too long. Zealot warp in on the south side. Going to try to be a little run by, but a spine crawler for us. Some spores here to drive away as well. Oh, there's no way. Woo. Pardon me. Yeah, there's no way that Semper attacks into this again. I think he's just throwing these units away, trying to make space for more carriers. We can see as soon as the units go down, he's warping in Dark Shrine. And uh, loses those immortals. So maybe overcommitting to that attack just a little bit. Good defense from Namshar. So five, six bases against two, three, four, five, six bases against one, two, three, four, five, six bases on the Zerg player. Fairly even for our Protoss player. Wow, feedbacks. Massive feedbacks onto those um onto those vipers. One viper goes down. Those were beautiful feedbacks from Semper. Targeting down those um Targeting down those Vipers very quick. That's going to force the Vipers all the way back home. they got to recharge their energy. And now, of course, they're very, very low on health as well. Broodlord count rising. Adding on two more, two more Vipers. Barroach Ravager run by here at the south side. Bailing's crashing into what they can. But as we said earlier, both these players just sort of getting rid of some of their lower value units here. I'm not sure why exactly Namshire's throwing them away. Uh, but Semper, of course, wants that maximum power Protoss army as the game ticks over into 19 and a half minutes here in game two between Namshar and Semper. Wow. Plus three flyer attacks on the way, and we see the Void Ray transition beginning for Semper. He knows he's going to need those Void Rays to deal with the ground army of Namshar. 18 more Banes on the way. These Banes could get a lot of damage done if they go for a roll through into some of these bases. I'm actually not sure if Namshar has even seen this bottom corner base yet from Semper. No, he is not. I wonder if, he, if he's going to bother spotting it. Looks like, yes, he is. Okay, he must suspect it's there. Uh, going to head down south and this base. Hmm. Plenty of photon cannons, which is nice. Shield battery overcharge going down on the shield battery, so it does have a bit of a super battery going down. But uh, the photon cannon is getting picked on by Corrosive Biles. Baneling's coming in. Baneling's, in. Baneling's getting some good shots. The cannons have been cleared here. Baneling's rolling into the mineral line. And oh no, it's a little late for Semper to pull away now. These are plus three Banelings, which means they kill probes in one shot. Wonderfully done by Namshar. 13 more probes going down. He's going to find himself even on workers yet again in this game. Semper climbing up to an income lead there briefly. But not for long. Namshar's going to even the odds. Seventh base start in the top corner for Namshar now couple more immortals and and uh zealots getting siren called to their death here on to creep into the waiting arms of ravagers and roaches and now finally a recall down to this bottom base and that's going to again force namshire back but we should see his corruptors here lickety split knowing these carriers don't have a free warp back to one of their bases for another 60 seconds could be a good time to get jumped on ah there's the other recall back to the natural well, there's another bailing run by happening. Not getting any damage done with that one, though. Here we go. As the cannons are being rebuilt, the zealots are here to try and defend. There's an Archon as well. But there are so many Banelings. The Archon going to go down. The zealots all going to go down. Another shield battery overcharge going down here at this base. But it looks like this time, Namshar may have enough firepower in his, in his, uh, in his army to actually take down this base. Banelings going to commit to it. Uh, Bailing's not going to commit to it yet. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. Pushed away by the DTs. Is he going to spend his Bailing? Yeah, because the Bailing's on the DTs. Uses the Bailing's on that base, and that is going to be it. The base does go down. The first base snipe for Namshar this game. He's been trying to break this position for a long time, and he's finally going to get it. Ling's popping down to the third base. Now only two photon cannons, or the fourth base, rather. Only two photon cannons at this fourth base. And the two armies still posturing as though they want to fight. There's no way Semper attacks into the Spore Crawler Forest first uh, without uh, being prepared for it. I'm a little surprised he's taking this fight, actually. Some good feedbacks. A nice storm as well. The Broodlord's going down. Don't worry, guys. This is not your game stuttering. It's mine. There's so much right now on the field. A good, um, 
Parasitic Bomb hitting some of those units there. All the carriers losing almost all of their shields, but the uh, Corruptor count still fairly low. Only 12 Corruptors out, and that's not quite enough Revelation going down and saving Semper the, the problems of tracking his opponent's army. He did pick off a lot of the Spore Crawler Forest here, but look at this Namshire rebuilding the Spore Crawlers immediately. Both players trying to get some more damage done. Pardon me, trying to shore up their positions and prevent damage from happening to them. Wow. 22 minute game. Very slow engagement so far. Semper moving on to creep. Corruptors not focus firing very well at all. They're trying to pick down these interceptors instead of focus firing on the carriers. There is one overseer here. The overseer goes down though. And now with relative impunity, these cloaked units can move through the map. There are four overseers still on the map. That should just mean a focus fire onto the mothership for these corruptors. I'm not sure what they're waiting on. Drawing out some more storms here. The storm energy is still pretty good. For Semper, he's got the uh, four, four High Templar there. Lings and Bane's going to equip this third base, though. And now it is all go time for Namshar. Namshar, uh, pardon me, for Semper. Semper knows that he needs to get something done right away. He's losing all of his economy back home. He is sniping a few bases here, but Namshar has some tricks up his sleeve. He's re-grabbing this base that Semper took earlier in the game, thinking Semper will never look there until he needs another base. And I'm going to keep him contained so he can't get another base. A big recall back home. All the carriers coming back for Semper. Unfortunately, that is the mothership exposed. Corruptor is going to pick down this mothership. Should go down pretty quickly. We see a time warp out of desperation for the mothership. But it's not going to do too much as the Corruptors continue to pick away at the mothership. Another carrier going down. The mothership goes down and the carrier gets picked off as well. Broodlord's still alive and Semper knows he can't do it from there. That's going to be it. With the loss.